I'm frozen. No, you're not. I just... I was. <laughs> I'm going to turn off that blur. It said that any uh, visual effects would slow down my computer. Morning, Paul. Oh, Paul's muted. Morning, how are you doing? You talking to me? <laughs> no, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Uh, yeah, good morning. Now I gotta get I muted myself. Because I have a little fan going here, that, so I muted it. You need a fan? Yeah, it's warm here today. Oh. We're having a high of 13 degrees today, um, Celsius. So what's that? About 54. <laughs> so, and low, we were, low of 32. Yeah, and zero sometime tonight. Your brass monkey. Yeah, but time to leave. As soon as I have to start wearing socks, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Says right now it's seven degrees. Well, I'm looking at our news here. I guess we're supposed to wait till ten to chat about the news. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at the topics in that um, document. Now yeah, my computer is going to be really stupid. We don't have trouble with computers. What are we going to talk about? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to be in, con in control of this thing, you've got to have computers. Problems. That's that's a given, isn't it? Yeah. We get to watch you solve them. Yeah. Well, yeah, right. might be a bit of a problem. That's what you guys are here for. <laughs> yeah, but if you can't talk to us and we can't talk to you, how are you going to solve them? No, don't push that button. Push the one to the left. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, your left, not my left. So in his document, he's got Cheryl is hosting the meeting, and then his next one is a lie. I am in Alaska. He's not. He's in Arizona. <laughs> What's working to do with this exciting uh, conversation in his head? The three of us. Everybody else um, bowed out, I guess. Well, I accepted the invitations by, I got emails from uh, Jim Cunningham, uh, Northwest Sunseeker, don't know who that is, and Dr. Maggie accepted the San Carlos Part Two. Hopefully, they come into the first one first. Oh, yeah. Huh. I don't know where everybody is. 
Well, the important people are here. Well, I had to let Paul in. I didn't have to let Bill in. So, weird. So, Paul, when are you heading to San Carlos? Probably around uh, Halloween. Around Halloween? Yeah. Oh, yeah. there, Mr. Cunningham. Good morning. Morning, Jimmy. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> We're a small group. Yeah, it, it appears. Let's see if I can get some of these things open here. And... Uh, The bigger screen. So who all's here? I haven't gotten this open yet. It's just Paul and Bill and I. Hey, Paul. Hey. How are you? Just fine. It looks like Paul's in uh, tequila, Jimmy's in New York, and I'm <laughs> on the lake. Yes, you and are. Cheryl's in her office. I'm in and my office with my bedroom furniture because the carpet cleaner is in the bedroom. So. <laughs> oh, my. Well, that makes you look real busy, so. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Answer the phone. Cheryl, mute me if you would. I can't hit the mute bar yet. And I got an incoming call. You're muted. You've got Avin's head in the middle of you, Bill. I got what? Avin's head, the back of Avin's head. Well, yeah, he's sort of there. <laughs> Here, I'll move over. How's that? Yeah. No, he can. Davin's talking to me. There you go. <laughs> yeah. What lake is that? Oh, this out in BC. Oh, it's the ocean, isn't it, Cheryl? It was the. Is that this summer? Yeah, then that's yeah. out on um, uh, the Pacific Ocean off the coast yeah. of Vancouver Island. Yeah. Far west coast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't make it to the. To the west coast i was uh in the the sound that starts at uh, port alberni and goes down i was fishing for salmon uh, from a lodge there oh yes yeah in port so alberni on our limits of fish what's the name of the place where oh here comes sandy hi sandy I can't stay long. I have workers coming. We're finishing up. Renters are coming this weekend. So I can't stay with you today, but wanted to let you know I was thinking of you. There you go. Hey, we who's, have... who's the new girl in front of your bow? All I see is long hair. That's my grandson. Ah. That's in we his background. What's his nickname, Cheryl? Oh, Lord Farquhar. If you've ever watched um, <laughs> only Lord Farquhar's uh, profile has been drastically um, affected. Um, he was at a party a couple of weekends ago, and, and somehow his face met a door, and he oh, has dear. a broken nose. The cartilage was sticking out the one side. and No, and the inside, dear, not at the outside. Well, yeah, it was kind of poking out the one edge. Yeah, anyway, so they... It was they, frightening. <laughs> they pushed it back in, and they did some stitches, and then they did some plastic surgery on Wednesday. So we haven't seen him since he's got his new... But I've been teasing him about, uh, you know, making sure that his Lord Farquhar is uh, intact. So... <laughs> Well, that's pretty funny. That's a good story. All right. Well, who all do? Uh, there's seven people on. Hello to all of them. One of them is your son. He just set up the um, the whatever he's recording. So that's up in the corner there with the all of us in it, and uh -huh. he left us to our own devices. 
Let me turn my TV off. And David is in there, I see. So good morning, everybody. I guess I'm supposed to say welcome to the San Carlos Computer Club. I am not Scott Simpson, but he did set this up, and I believe he's recording it. He might drop in every so often. He sent out our document. I put it in the chat, but I can do it again in case anybody didn't get it. He's got a couple of topics in there for us to talk about. And one thing to um, update with Paul. And Paul is here this morning. Oh, really? uh, yeah, it says, what is the actual name of Paul's recommendation? Inventions that change the world, something like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. But it's, it was on free V. You know, you, you uh, have a choice of uh, a site called free V, F R E E V E E. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, okay, that's where it was, inventions that change the world. And it, tell me again, F-R-E-E? -E? Yeah, V-E-E. -E. V -E. V, -E. v like victory. Yeah, well, first one spread, Frank. <laughs> F-R-E-E-V-E-E. -E -E. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm putting it in the document. And uh, that is a streaming service? Yes. And what is the actual name of the show? Inventions that change the world. Inventions that change the world. And you still recommend it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I finished watching them all. So it was every decade in the 90s. And... Uh, the inventions that were were significant. Some of them they just mention, and some they do a little expose on. Oh, okay, cool. So the other two things he's got in there: White House bans paywalls on taxpayer-funded research. Did anybody read this article? I don't know what a paywall is. Yeah, <laughs> I was looking at it, but Jim, you have to unmute uh, yourself. I can't unmute you. So a hopefully paywall you is when you hit a site and they want a subscription before they'll let you see what's in behind. Uh, the Washington Post, I believe. Oh, a lot of, has a, lots of newspapers. Do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's you. You have to pay to get behind the wall. That's basically the the theory. Oh, okay. Manchester. It bait, it's a bait and switch. Yeah. yeah. I wonder when that becomes effective. I guess the president got frustrated with him and said, the heck with this, I'm not gonna, I don't make enough money to pay all these subscriptions to newspapers. <laughs> So any taxpayer-funded research is not allowed to have to, not allowed to charge you to see the research. Oh, I see. it's not newspapers. Then. No. Um, the optional charge, publicly funded research will now be public. You cannot, um, you can't charge people to, to see the publicly funded research. Excellent. Sounds like a good idea. Certainly does. And the, the other one, I wonder how come he gives me these fun ones. How one Reddit guy's disastrous playlist launched an absurd sex album. That's interesting. <laughs> anthem. Anthem one. Oh. Oh, Anthem. That's what it is, yes. What playlist was that, Jimmy? Say what? Was that your playlist? <laughs> I'd like to say yes, but sadly, <laughs> it's not. I read the article, and uh, I don't even recognize the artist. Oh. <laughs> I'm too old. 
don't even recognize the artist. I, I've heard all, so many things this week about um, the King Charles the Third and how, formerly known as Prince. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. Formerly known as the artist or the the prince, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so the what is this? Formerly known as the prince. Yes. <laughs> Launch an absurd sex anthem. You're freezing. Yeah, I I opened something on my computer and so now I'm frozen. All right, oh, I got that. Yeah, I won't open it on there. I'll open it on my um iPad so I can look at it. Oh, no, so you're really starting to sound get... like Scott. You got frozen um, computer and another and a couple more Apple products sitting there running. My God. Are you sure you're not in Alaska? <laughs> <laughs> I smack you if I was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I'm back. Okay, does anybody have any other topics? <laughs> Let's... You want to all come over and help me get my rentals ready? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to talk about. I can talk for on and on. <laughs> well, you want to come over and uh, help us get our bedroom furniture back into the bedroom? Well, I get to do that here. I'll have that experience here. <laughs> so come up with something better. <laughs> so is anybody else watching um, The Rings of Power? Not yet. I watched the first episode, but I haven't been able to get to the second and the third and the fourth. There you go. Here comes Scott. Scott, guess what? My computer's freezing up. <laughs> ah, hey, how does it feel, Cheryl? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just popping in for a moment. I've been listening to your guys' conversation. And I just wanted to mention that the reason that that article is interesting about the Reddit user is because the musician had been lost. People didn't know anything about him anymore. And this guy goes on to Reddit and tells this story, this crazy story about how he has a playlist for having sex. And this one song just really annoys his girlfriend <laughs> and that she never wants him to play it again. And he even went as far as he wasn't playing the music, but she caught him using the same rhythm <laughs> in the act and had him stop because she could recognize the song <laughs> so, this generated so much interest from reddit that it spiked the interests it spiked the 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 views and the and the googles the the searches for this guy's song all of a sudden this guy is back in our lexicon all of a sudden, people are knowing his name again and listening to this music again because of this guy's sex story on Reddit. Oh, oh to I, be young, young again and have that much that? sex. <laughs> my, my, my child is standing next to me. She's like, are you talking about Seabeck? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously afflicted with internet herself. Here's here's Emily doing manual labor here at where where we're working. Good morning, wow. sweetheart. Everybody says hi. Your your Mina says good morning. Good morning. Way to go, Emily. Hey, hey, good morning. I'd be sleeping. <laughs> did did you hear that? Muscles. Look at those muscles. Mina says, look at those muscles. Made them here at the B and B. <laughs> we need them here at the B and B. All right, we'll stop interrupting your work. I'm going to have to stop participating. I've got to go back to my work. 
you guys have a good meeting. I just wanted to make sure you got the full impact of that story. Uh, <laughs> when, do you, when do you leave? And it brought him back. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we will be leaving tomorrow morning. Pardon me, tomorrow morning. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay. Yuya and her sister are already on the road. They should be with us this afternoon or this evening. They'll stay the night, and then we'll all head to San Carlos tomorrow. A dog. I'm going to be on a, I'm be on a ship for the next two Tuesdays. <laughs> a cruise. Oh, excellent. Where that sounds like fun. I thought we'd go to Mexico. I'm going to say goodbye. You guys enjoy. Take care, Scott. Bye-bye. So, Paul, so is, going, Paul? The Paul this is, what, what, what cruise are you taking? Well, it's on Princess, and it goes to uh, Cabo, and then La Paz, and uh, then I guess, I, I think we skip Mazatlan and go to Puerto Vallarta. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> So how many nights are you on that one? Pardon me? How many nights is that cruise? Ten day trip. Ten days. Um, the last time you were on a cruise, you came back with a playlist of things that you had watched, you downloaded and then watched or something? Yeah, I'll try to keep track more closely. <clears throat> because it's a huge uh, inventory of movies to watch on the ship now. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Too bad there isn't any scenery or any ocean or, you know, anything to look at on those cruises. Yeah. <laughs> there might be a couple, couple birds fly by. Yeah, you might. If you're looking up. <laughs> well, so that's two weeks. The next two Tuesdays, you're going to be gone? Oh. Yeah, I, I yeah. think so. We're yeah. leaving. We're leaving Saturday for ten days, and then you're heading to San, San Carlos end of October. Scott's going to yeah. be in San Carlos tomorrow. Yeah. What about uh, Mr. Cunningham? Aren't you guys heading down? Yeah, we're uh, looking at uh, leaving next Wednesday, and we'll probably take a couple of weeks working our way down. Good. Good. But and I Sandy? imagine across about mid mid October would be my guess. Did you ask me? Yeah. Okay. We'll leave here the eighth of November, go into Oregon for three days, and then we'll go into Mexico, or not Mexico, Arizona. Um, then our plan to come to San Carlos will be close to Viviana's Quinceanera. Oh. So we'll come down and we'll stay about a week. At least that's our plan right now. But we have officially moved out of San Carlos now. We're we're in Mesa. Right. Oh. So, so we have to uh, visit. Viviana, is that uh, November or is that in December? She'll have it in December. Her birthday is the... Um, um, wait a minute. I've lost her birthday. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm in trouble. I think her birthday, I want to say the 14th, and she's having her quinceanera on the 17th. Don't tell Scott. I'll have to go look it up. <laughs> I just know the quinceanera is the 17th. <laughs> well, I know we were there for her birthday last year. Yes. Um, when you were can't, we were uh, renting next door to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I have pictures of her birthday that are, are going to be in um, my book that I make like we make a photo book of our trips and oh, nice. I'm just working on it I've got to get it done because it's supposed to be delivered in a week and uh, we're only here for another two and a half so <laughs> I better get busy <laughs> so that's my big technology thing right now is working on that and also trying to get all these things coordinated we have um credit cards that expire while we're gone, driver's licenses that expire while we're away, all these things that have to be, you know, brought up to date. And then you're relying on the, the stupid mail. And our Thanksgiving is October, the like it's the second Monday in October. So like it's something like the ninth this year. So that's a long weekend that we have no mail. 
So I'm <laughs> pushing things here. But. Um, Terry does all that for me. I'm so spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So is anybody else watching anything or doing yes. anything? Yeah. You've all, watched, you've all watched this. We're just, we're on the very last episode of For All Mankind. And we actually last night stopped in the middle of that episode because we didn't want it to end. I think we'll start in again tonight, probably go back an episode and, you know, milk it all the way to the end. We have so enjoyed that series. Well, tell us about it. What, what, where is it and what is it? Okay. Um, I don't know where he finds it, but I do know it's on uh, Radios or, yeah, Radiosity, I believe. It, uh, you know, for all mankind, it's, it's as if, Back when we had the space race, it's as if we continued on with that. We didn't pull away from NASA, you know, stop spending money not, and not sending things to the moon. Uh, this is as if we continued on. And it shows a little bit of the Russian, you know, situation. Well, actually, a lot of the Russian situation, because that's the whole point. We're trying to beat the Russians especially to Mars. The whole goal is getting to Mars. So it's science uh, fiction, or yeah, science fiction, yeah. But it's, um, it's more than that. You, you really get to know the characters in the show, you, their problems. They come up against incredible obstacles that they, as a group of scientists, have to figure out because one of the shuttles is in trouble, you know, and the creativity of how they go about doing that, unfortunately, you don't get to see all of it. It just sort of sometimes magically is corrected, but it's the people's reaction, all of that. I, I just, I have really enjoyed this series. For all mankind. It looks good. You've seen it? Uh, no, I'm just looking it up right now and it's on Apple TV. We don't go much for uh, science fiction, and um, but this one just captured us. And now I think maybe my husband might be ready to watch The Expanse. Or maybe that's going to be too far out. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see. I'll have to take it a little bit at a time. <laughs> oh, do you know on The Expanse, you guys, you know that there's an audio, what's it called? Audio uh, something where it's not dubbed. What it does is, is if you are reading kind of the director's oh, right, cut. cut, yeah. And so um, in the expand, when I watched The Expanse, that helped me greatly because there's just so much going on and so many you know, different names of planets and asteroids and stuff that you kind of, and then they come back to the same one, but you can't remember its name because it was weird. Um, with the director's cut, they, they talk what the scene you are going to see, right, you know, as it's acting, and then it stops and lets you listen to the dialogue and lets you follow for a while. And then if somebody's moving or somebody's talking or somebody's looking out the window, it might say, there goes asteroid six by, you know, and then the guy or whoever's talking says, ah, there's six. I wondered where asteroid six was, something dumb like that. But um, because there is so much new language and everything, it really ha helped me to be able to appreciate that series more is that a series or is that a movie no that's a series and okay. it has that's I on remember. amazon prime isn't it i think so and i can't remember there's several seasons to it it's not just a short you know one year they are season they they have quite a few seasons what, what's the title of that one again the expanse Yeah, I just put it in the document too. So the expanse and um, something of mankind. Yeah. Okay. Um, I watched uh, 
where the crawdads sing mm -hmm. and it it very much followed the book except i guess i had forgotten the ending because i thought i knew something and then it didn't tell me it in the movie um <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a few things like that in there movies can't tell the whole story yeah yeah but it was it was quite well done um mm -hmm. You know, I think captured what the author w had described quite well, and she, um, the the swamp girl, uh, was very um, educated in the biology and the and she wrote books and had them published and everything and her drawings of all of the uh, flora and fauna of the Everglades and uh, of that area. It, it was uh, it was very interesting, very interesting show. Did the um, the the girl who played the swamp girl did did she match what you were seeing when you read the story? Uh, she was a little more refined, and um, I I thought of her more feral than that, <laughs> if if I could say that. Uh, yeah, when we were reading the book as a as a book club, I I think we thought that she um, was quite dirtier and unkept than what they acted or you know what they presented her to be so that was kind of my feeling too but it didn't take away from the story yeah yeah like her, her even her home um was much more organized and and um i don't know had more furniture in it and stuff than i thought that she was living in yeah didn't yeah. look like a squalor. No. <laughs> yeah. Anybody Did else? Anybody watch The Fall yet? F A L L? It's a movie? That's a movie. No. What's that one about? That one's about these two oh. young ladies that climb, I forget how tall of a tower, and then get trapped. Oh. It's, <laughs> I think I lost a few years watching it. <laughs> I saw the trailer. Did, did you lose a few years? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, haven't read, I haven't watched the movie yet, so. All right, put that on your list, because I want to hear from you. <laughs> it's been the most exciting film we've seen in a long time. <laughs> okay terrorizing rather than exciting. <laughs> I did a, another upgrade or update um, our I, iPhones and my iPad. Everybody had to be updated um, mm -hmm. with the new, what do you call it? Upload, new system upgrade. And uh, the one on the phone did not go well. All of a sudden, my phone was all locked up, and it had to be plugged mm. into an, uh, a computer, and we had to go to, I don't know, Bill did it. I was, yeah, who was your amazing technician that fixed it? Yeah, well, somebody had to fix it because it was going out the door, out the window. I tell you, I was so frustrated. There were other things happening that day, but that was just the top of the get what the you know like why can't things go smoothly with technology so then i did my ipad last night and it went beautifully no problem made sure it was plugged in it went no no issues so i think my phone just hates me still <laughs> yeah so James, you came on after we talked about people heading to San Carlos and stuff. You and Carolyn are heading that way. Yes, oh, our plans now are to uh, to leave the, the house here on the uh, the fifteenth, wind our way southward. We have uh, friends in uh, in Everett who are uh, is it Everett, Washington, some some no, it's Eugene in uh, Oregon, and they. Um, they're they're saying, come on, our RV's parked in the yard. We don't go south anymore, but you're welcome to stay there. We're we're not going to bring our RV this time. We've made a decision, and uh, because uh, when we we took it to have it, um, it all uh, checked out. There were just so, so many things that they were saying. Okay, well, you know, this is working, but we, you know, there, it's weak spot. You know, 
around around the, the thing and so we thought <clears throat> we only wanted to take it one more time down there anyway and then we're going to be so we're, we're accelerating that program and we're going to drive down in the uh, in the honda it's a whole different thing you know because when, when you have an rv you, you want something else well just throw it in you know and uh, now we're, we're going pair 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 down and, and also we plan to take a trip from san carlos to Yalapa, which is just south of uh, Puerto Vallarta, so we have to plan a, a vacation within the vacation, if you know what I mean, too. So it's going to be exciting down there. We'll be borrowing a lot of tools, I think, from uh, from our neighbors in Tecola if we need them, because we used to carry them all with us. I think when you go south of Puerto Vallarta, you're really in the jungle, aren't you? Well, you, you are, it's, and it's called Cabo Corrientes, and, and uh, the point of... of uh, of, you know, Cabo San Lucas and Cabo Corrientes define uh, the opening of, of uh, the Sea of Cortez. And so we're out on that uh, that point, the other, you know, not the Cabo San Lucas point, but the other one in Yalapa. And it's a town that you really don't drive to. You, uh, the best way to get there is by boat, even though it's at the toe of a cliff. And there is sometimes a, a road that you can go down the, down the mountain, but it washes out so often that many people... <laughs> Have left their cars behind there, and there's no no cars in the in the town. It's all, it was built for horses, and now they have quads. But you guys are going to drive down to there. Well, we drive down to Port of Ayr, and then we take the boat from there. It's a twenty five uh, or tw twenty one kilometers by boat, and usually takes close to three quarters of an hour. Yeah, I've been there. Before. You've been there, yeah. Yeah, as a a tour from a cruise. All right, yeah, the the two hour tour. Yeah, when when we live there, uh, it's it's quite. Rather, you know. so, yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's sometimes as many as two hundred gringos that that are actually playing in in that little town, but mostly it's just people coming in for a two hour tour and <laughs> just. So, it's, nice the, it's nice on the beach, but we uh, walked up the trail going south, so. Uh, and it was a very nice walk that we made. You saw butterflies and spiders and such. Yeah. Did somebody take you on a on a walk or we just me and another fellow just walked. Oh yeah. yeah there, there's some really nice waterfalls that you yeah. can walk in. And uh, there's there's um it, it's like San Carlos in the sense that they they uh, they've embraced tourism and, and so there's lots of little places to eat or or shops where people sell things they make. Yeah, and was... I've spent about a, a year of my life there, and on the Jan or on February 14th every year, that's Valentine's Day. There is the it's the last day of a of a five day event. It's a croquet tournament, and people from all over the world show up for it. As many as as 72 can fit into the 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 grid, and um, it's fun. Everybody puts in 20 bucks, and there's a pretty big prize at the end if you're uh, if you're the winner. I've never won first. And Carolyn has come second. And uh, when I did come third one time, we not only paid for all of our um, our festivities, you know, our entry fee and, and the food we ate uh, when we were there, because they set up a restaurant and so, and uh, a little bit more than you know, we had a little, you know, just a few bucks more than what we had paid for the whole thing. But it's fun. And when people who are not uh, professional athletes get in a situation where there's uh, 72 players okay and plus the the town shows up because a lot of the players are uh, mexicans and so they're all they're all there and lots of screaming and yelling well these guys are holding on to the uh their their mallet and and they for the first time in their life they realize what johnny unitas must have been up against with the, you know the crowd shouting at him and, <laughs> and then of course you know when when the shots are good or bad if people are heroes or goats for the day you know it's fun anyway we're going down there this year for that so that's in february you're heading down there yeah yeah we're going to be down for we're going to go down i think we've got uh two weeks booked in the in the village and then we're going to get there somehow whether we whether we drive i hope we fly out of obergon if we can figure a way so I'm interested in what kind of injuries you have to sustain for this type of sport. <laughs> well, there's mo mostly emotional, uh, but uh, <laughs> but it, it's just croquet, and but it's in the jungle. Like yeah, 
<laughs> so, uh, so that you, you never know, you could wake up in the morning and, and uh, some kind of ants would go right through where you're going to play. And, and if you fall into the trough, your ball will roll practically to the ocean, you know. So oh, yeah. it is, it's, it's pretty, um, it's not like the croquet that we were used to with a very, very yeah. surface with, with uh, walls on the side so your ball can't go too far. You could literally knock the ball into the jungle if you were to want to. But, or your opponents, knock your opponent's ball into the jungle. Well, that's that's they, 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 do, they play a game called cross-country croquet where there's no, you don't hit your uh, opponent's ball except in play. And um, there's no advantage to it. So it's more like golf. It's, some people call it golf croquet. And it's, it's fun because you set the, the wickets every day and uh, they're different. And, and you can play it on very rough terrain. Like in in uh, be a perfect place out there where you, where you live, Cheryl, because as long as you can get a, a big enough field and and you can you can have some fairly long shots too, you know. Anyway, we're looking forward yeah. to it. And if you, you want to wish any luck, wish Carolyn luck because she is a better player than me. <laughs> it sounds oh. like aggressive croquet to me. <laughs> well, I know that in the, in the big. Um, Pro Am tournament, uh, you you can't really win anymore unless you you draw the name of a Mexican because the Mexicans <laughs> are just like a cut above us. They just understand the level of the land. And I've seen beautiful big curved shots that they they pulled off. You know, it's fun. <laughs> Extreme croquet. <laughs> croquet. Yeah, <laughs> That's really fun. Yeah. Okay, That's guys, perfect. I gotta sign off. Okay. Bye. Sandy. Bye. Have fun with the rest of your time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for the recommendation, Sandy. Take care. Well, that's that playing on in a rough field like that is the way that the Italians played bocce ball. Yeah. Now, now bocce ball is like on a smooth surface, but they just if they go on a picnic, they play bocce ball, and, and it's just uh, whatever surface they they find there at the picnic. That was a great political debate in um, at um, Tekeli. Because we do have a lawn, it's a rare thing in in uh, Yalapa, and uh, some people wanted to build a bocce court. And we kept saying there is a bocce court. It's called a lawn. It's right there. Just go do it. Yeah. But okay. uh, we've spent the money now, and we have a, a bocce co a court with sand in it, uh, not unlike the one they have up at uh, Loma del Mar. Yeah, and it took up part of our croquet space. <laughs> I don't know, but there's lots of room for croquet there too. Do you uh, practice for the big event there? Well, I wouldn't say that, but, uh, but we do have a, a pretty good set of, um, of mallets and balls and things. So we and we we do drag them down there, and uh, we we usually organize one day a, a week where where we pretty well guarantee that we're going to be there with the, the equipment all set up so that people can can join. And uh, so far, um, they're just fun games. Nobody puts. Uh, puts money down on it but I tell you once once people start putting a uh, um, five pesos down on the game then um, the rules become very serious <laughs> <laughs> then you need a referee <laughs> well it, in in uh, Yalapa there's usually two judges on the court at all times and um, and if you you know like you get one hit at the ball if you step up and you're addressing the ball and you tap it well that's serious you're out <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Well, you were talking about people yelling things. Uh, the, fa the favorite thing I ever heard yelled was uh, my grandson's ho hockey game, and uh, somebody in the, the crowd yelled out, Hey, ref, go back to figure skating. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good, uh, that's a, a good one. So I think there's another one about uh, gerbils genitals that uh, comes up about referees sometimes too. <laughs> so some of those hockey players I wouldn't want to call uh, call foul and have their uh, wrath at me in amateur sport. I've seen pictures of his stick over the thing, and I was waiting for that stick to get broken, and it was just held together by magnets. By the look of it, even just went. Yeah, oh. yeah, it was just. <laughs> now he's going to have to go walk. And, uh, and have a real go at it, but yeah, break it over his knee like a baseball bat. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'd like to see that knee. Anyway, uh, that was uh, that was a disappointment. <laughs>
But I, I did enjoy the thing, and, and in Canada, I don't know, Cheryl, did you watch the, uh, the uh, memorial here in Canada? No, um, I, I saw bits and pieces of it on the news, but the news, but the no. one in Ottawa with the, the one yeah. part I watched was the native speaker and talking about uh, Queen Elizabeth and her, her, her goals and uh, that she will continue those on in the spirit world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was a, it was a very um, the, that the the reconciliation could continue. In, yeah. in in the native's mind, and I thought that was a pretty pretty cool kind of kind of concept. Well, but, they also uh, uh, they had uh, Rufus Wainwright uh, the third. I don't know if anybody knows him, but he's a pretty good singer, and uh, got uh, he's from sort of musical aristocracy almost, you know, and uh, and he sang uh, Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, not a dry eye in the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, we didn't watch it. Um, I assume Carolyn would have been. <laughs> but, oh yeah, we were up at uh, at three in the, well, before three in the morning to uh, to watch the show. That's for sure. Yeah, big big things. Any anybody who understands the uh, uh, how uh, the fourth uh, every fourth year, you know, you have a, a change of the head of state or central in the United States. And then uh, to imagine uh, the, the same thing, but in England after 70 years, you know, it's a, I'm amazed right. and remembered how to do it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, and the, a lot of pomp. And you start to see the, the ceremony of it uh, that uh, that is so important, you know, the, that uh, sort of a peaceful transition of power, uh, how, how significant that, that really is in, the, in a modern country. So James, did you have to did you have to camp out in front of the TV to get a spot to watch it? <laughs> no, no. Luckily, we had uh, not a very big TV. We were uh, I always covered those those big, uh, you know, sixty five inches or so. But we, uh, we just watched in the middle of the room, and and uh, it was dark here because it was middle of the night, and I I, I kind of wanted to go and walk around and see how many lights were on around to see because it's uh, there's a lot of royalists around here. Yeah, I would bet on Vancouver Island there were more than uh, out here in the West. <laughs> so, All you Republicans <laughs> want to tweet from a, a, a uh, monarchy to a republic. Yeah, I was pretty surprised to see our premier in England, but. Um, no, yeah. We'll yeah. to have him, that guy. Yeah. Anyway, it was, uh, it was uh, it's been quite a quite a time, and people back in England, and it's, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're, it's an interesting interesting thing. I wonder now because um, uh, Charles is such a, a much older man that he's the oldest king that's ever um, been uh, with, with coronation. So <clears throat> that he's got a lot of experience and he's been a, a, a political activist up to now and all of a sudden now he's got to be that uh, neutral monarch. And it's going to be interesting to see how we, uh, how we can handle the change. Yes, it will be interesting. Yeah, yeah. See if he's going to be able to keep his nose out of, uh, out of the, the uh, tabloids. <laughs> we already did. Did you see the, they've already, they've already got a couple of, pictures of him signing documents and, and uh, it, there, one of the pens leaked on his hand and he was not uh, <laughs> not impressed. So, no, they, they've shown that one over and over and over again and, you know, like, come on, give him a break. You know? yeah. <laughs> the really first thing was the crowds, the turnout. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's hard to believe mm -hmm. that many people would go to that trouble and stand in line for hours and hours and hours just to walk past the casket. Um, very impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Twice. And, and it was very peaceful. They 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 apprehended one guy. You know, that's all I, I've ever. But um, yeah, he. It was. They had all of the, you know, police and everything there. But it it really kind of looked like they they didn't have too many issues. Can you imagine standing in line? For fourteen hours, uh, for nothing. I, you know, that's that's a long time. And the people that were there in the line, like um, you know, uh, Beckham, the the uh, uh, soccer player, was just hanging out with everybody else in the line. You know, they had uh, some 
pictures of him and how he was, you know, it really, the thing is that <clears throat> the head of state embodies the, the country and, and as a person. So, so the, the royal family is, is kind of like, um, represents the, the, the people. They're, they're just, uh, they got a matriarch, they got, um, you know, a bad boy son and all the, it's just, they're normal, but they're, their, you know, their their best interests, or their, they understand what um, uh, you know what the the country needs. They 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 are able to um, uh, to be disinterested. They certainly don't need the money, and and I, I always wonder why they they don't just say, okay, thank you very much. You know, we're gonna we're gonna quit on the first of January and and just take their money and go and and live happily ever after. <laughs> It was quite a service that she did all those years, you know. And she she came to Canada twenty two times, and uh, when yeah, I don't know if you heard the story about uh, like uh, when uh, our prime minister was no who was it uh, told the story of of um, Mr. Reagan, and Mr. Reagan asked the Queen where she's going after they've gone riding in in uh, um, California. She saw him. She said, "I'm going home," and he said, "He said, oh." I, I thought that the, the trip was continuing. He says, she says, oh, I'm going to uh, Van, um, British Columbia. She called that home. Oh, how funny. Yeah. She called it her second home. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She felt more at home in Canada. Yeah. And her first trip here, she was a, a princess, and uh, she kind of cut her teeth on it. But she was came, and she was supposed to be here for two weeks, and she ended up staying for five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. five, five weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, in, our, in our town, there's a, um, um, it's now a park, uh, it's part of the university, but it, she used to stay there because she would go and, and uh, do all of her weekend shtick, you know, going around and, 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 uh, and going to events. And then she would kind of disappear and then she would show up for the next weekend in Vancouver or Calgary or something like that. Well, in the, the time off that she had, she came to visit Veronica just... Uh, to about a mile and a half from here, a uh, nice place on the ocean. And that's where she used to spend. So she 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 did all right. She was she had time, and she she told uh, a couple of the governor generals um, that, that she had here in Canada mentioned that, that in the first time that she talked to them, she said, you know, take care of yourself. You're taking care of the, of the country, but you've got to take care of yourself too. Like don't don't overwork or or you know get. <laughs> wrapped up in, in some politicians' woes, you know. Yeah, she's quite, quite the woman. Mm -hmm. So our, our call ends soon. It says mm -hmm. four minutes left. Um, does anybody have any more computer stuff we need to talk about? Um, no, I think we're, we're probably good. Um, I'm probably not going to start the next meeting. If everybody's okay with that, <laughs> well, we'll just go with a with a, a one forty five minute meeting today. Um, I'll have well, to... well done, Cheryl. There you go. <laughs> okay, sorry, I was late. I was having trouble getting. Uh, Carolyn, Carolyn needed the computer, and we're we're all my other ones are too old to put this on. So <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to be on the road about the same time as us. We're yeah. we're leaving here on the thirteenth of October, but uh, we're spending two months in the, the States before we head to... Okay, well, we'll have to get some suggestions about uh, uh, programs for uh, uh, hotels along the way or something like that, because uh, we won't be so lucky to stay in somebody's RV uh, all the way there. Yeah. <laughs> five, five days on the road, I think, at minimum, minimum. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've got most of our bookings done. I haven't booked December yet, but I've got October and November all booked up. So, so we're well, in... you're booking them ahead like that, eh? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I pretty well know where we're going each night. Really? Uh, we've got our hotel in Butte. We've got one in Jackpot. Uh, that one's a free night at a casino. <laughs> so we <laughs> we take advantage of our free nights at casinos along. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about that. Does anybody get them, or only um, sort of? Uh card sharks like Bill. <laughs> you have to get a card when you walk into the casino and sign up and they'll send you offers. Mm. Yeah, but they probably don't send you a, a free night unless you've got something like Bill with you that they know. 
not until after you've played a little bit in their casino. So. Yeah. <laughs> but right, well, those we are, are, are quite cheap. We won't you know, be playing that way. I, I think that I'd rather pay the uh, pay the rent than uh, lose all my money at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Au revoir. Okay. Care. Nice bye talking bye. to you guys. Yeah. See you in Car San Carlos. Oh, okay. Okay, I don't know. Okay, looks like everybody has left the meeting. So Scott, I don't know if you're still recording, but um, we're out of here. Check on.